Hey, good morning. I'm out in the Nevada Outback this morning, gassing up here in Lovelock. Going to head, look for some obsidian, and look at alluvial fans, the Mount Majuba Seven Troughs area. Head over to the Black Rock. Should be cool. We'll check some things out. Up here in Poker Brown Wash, getting near the Poker Brown Gap where it transitions over into the next drainage basin. But I'm tracing out these naturally occurring obsidian deposits so we can better understand the toolstone sources. I think these are uh, the Mount Majuba geochemical group. I don't know until I do the geochemistry, but it's in the space that it should be. But we really don't know the distribution on the landscape of this important uh, prehistoric traditional obsidian source. So I'm tracing it up the Proker Brown fan. I'll drop in over here by seven troughs where I pick up another obsidian source and I'll start checking it out and see if how they mix together, how the fans work to redistribute this stuff that people used as toolstone, make artifacts, make sharp edges, and uh, we can use it for uh, obsidian hydration dating and things like that. So it's uh, pretty cool. Need to understand these sources and how they work. They're not just points on a landscape. Distributed all over the place, and uh, it's nice to get that narrowed down. So that's what I'm doing today, trying to beat the snow a little bit and uh, get some views and experience the outback as usual. All right, talk to you soon. Alrighty, I'm starting my first location this morning. I'm out at the distal end of the Poker Brown Gap, the fan that comes out of Poker Brown Gap. And uh, I'm gonna collect a few obsidian nodules here. They're coming out and uh, they kind of outcrop a little bit in this uh, in the gravels that rest on these lacustrian sediments of Pluvial Lake Lahan. And I'm gonna start tracing these up the fan, see if I get some bigger um, good source nodules. And I can kind of characterize the fan. I collect four, five, six samples from each locality and then uh, do some geochemistry on them and uh, make sure they're um, coming out of Majuba if that's what this source is. I think it is. And uh, we'll keep on going. Cool. Right, collected four or five samples from here and I'm gonna move on down the road and like encounter these gullies coming out of the poker brown gap fan and uh, by characterizing like the nature of the gravels where obsidian is present where it might not be present um, I can kind of characterize how the fan is working and where that source where the uh, kind of the primary source area might be might have been a long time ago before the mountains and erosion moved everything around. And uh, so I'll stop along each of these little gullies where there's a little bit of an exposure, a little bit of more gravel concentrated, better chance of getting the nodules that I'm looking for, and uh, collect a few samples. And then, uh, like I said, and uh, maybe we'll see a pattern after a while. We'll keep on moving. Got a lot of places to look at today, um, hopefully before the snow flies. And uh, awesome. Cool. Let's go. Looks like I got about six in there, little nods, little nodules. Again, not necessarily great toolstone, um, not necessarily great raw material for making tools and things. You get some sharp edges out of this, but it will help characterize the fan a little bit. We can begin to trace the source back. I'm here at uh, my waypoint, waypoint four today. Second, about 8.30. Cool. Do the same thing at each uh, locality and uh, see if we get some patterns. Nice. One thing I really want to 
to make sure of is that I'm not in an archaeological site and I'm not collecting culturally modified uh, rocks and uh, or artifacts. I don't not want to collect artifacts and uh, I want to collect non-cultural stones so I can trace the source material in the alluvial fan and not disturb archaeological resources here along the Humboldt River. I'm uh, trying to stay focused on uh, uh, public land, um, stay off private property out here. It's a lot of checkerboard country, but checkerboard with the railroad, um, the old railroad checkerboard. And uh, so I'm uh, trying to keep respect private property and, uh, and not disturb archaeological resources um, that are important to understanding the prehistory of the Humboldt River Basin um, in this area. Um, but understanding the obsidian sources also helps us interpret the archaeological record from these sites here and elsewhere where you find majuba or other obsidians. And uh, So a little caution, um, don't collect artifacts and uh, uh, keep an eye out for uh, good source material. Cool. All right. Okay, this is stop number five. I'm up a little bit away from Rye Patch Reservoir, a little higher on the fan, where I have a gravel bar, probably a Lake Lahontan berm uh, bar feature. It's been a little up, still distal fan. We're still pretty far down, but um, I have obsidian in gravel form, pretty small uh, mantling, kind of the top of the, uh, the bar and uh, it's not too uh, too stone useful it's not it's not really that useful but um, it kind of fits with this context of like gravels being re reworked by the lake into this uh, bar feature and then one of the nice things is some of the badger burrows and the back dirt from the badger burrows have the larger nodules in them um, this one has a carbonate rind it was probably on the bottom it was upside down in the badger back dirt, but that tells me it's disturbed, of course, because it's in the badger back dirt. But that's a good indicator of uh, disturbance in places. If you don't see an obvious uh, burrow or uh, greater uh, disturbance or whatever, look for those rinds. If they're upside down, they're pointing up, these form on the bottom of class when they're buried in sediment, buried in the landform where they were originally deposited. They sit there for a while and evaporation pulls minerals up around them, they get stuck on the bottom, and these carbonate rinds build up and uh, make nice little markers because if they're in place, they'll be down. If they're disturbed, they'll be up. Now sure, you could get disturbed and be laying correctly, and that's just a chance you have to take. Um, but you see a bunch of these, you get the pattern, you know, oh, this area is disturbed or whatever. Nicer thing here, it tells me these obsidian nodules are in this fan still. Not unexpected. I was finding them down lower on the distal fan as I move up. I'm getting some little bit bigger nodules. And I'm hopefully, I'll, as I continue up towards uh, Poker Brown Gap, um, I'll see even larger nodules. And then we'll really get into the really toolstone quality, good for making uh, artifacts and uh, making tools, making sharp edges that are useful um, rather than these small nodules, these small little gravels that uh, um, are not really useful, but they show me a little bit about this landform um, that I'm at right here. So uh, let's keep on going. I'll bag these up and uh, this is spot number five. We must have spot number six up the road here somewhere. I've mapped them out about 20 locations I want to look at today and uh, probably some other sporty places in between, and we'll keep going before the snow flies. It's kind of interesting, the more I look at this fan, these deeper gravel beds intermix with sand, um, nicely laminar. You can really kind of see some of the structure, the flow structures here. They're reddened. It weathered at the surface for a while. Um, these gravels tend not to have much obsidian, hardly any at all. Occasional little sporty gravel or something, but the um, kind of sh did a little walk up um, again through the profile and the obsidian picks up in this kind of zone right near the top, not on the top, 
but um, near the top of this head cut. Those nodules seem to be confined to that unit about mid profile and uh, up mid profile up towards the top. Carbonate is uh, dominant up there and we see a lot of carbonate um, in that part of the profile where this is reddened, you get lighter colored, you get more carbonate in that profile up top and then uh, that's where the obsidian nodules are and then you get another kind of little bit of finer grain then a pavement on top of that and that has no obsidian in it so we're getting a little bit of a sequence here we'll see if it keeps to repeat itself see if uh, um, we can get some more clues that's pretty nice um, we'll define it in the in the fan and at that time Wherever the source material was, the parent material for this fan deposit was cutting through some obsidian somewhere and bringing it down here. At other times, it wasn't cutting through there as much, if at all. Um, so we can kind of start to maybe narrow down um, the source of the obsidian and uh, the primary source of the obsidian and, uh, um, and then look a bit about where the origins of the fan is working. That's why this material is kind of really interesting. It's archaeologically interesting and it's geologically interesting. Alrighty, I'm up pretty high on Poker Brown Wash and really near Poker Brown Gap where we drop into, I think we're going to be dropping into the Black Rock drainage basin, eh, maybe at the top of uh, uh, Sage Hen Flat over there or Sage Flat or whatever it's called down towards the Seven Troughs. Um, but I'm getting good size nodules. They're very common on the surfaces of the inset fan. I haven't seen them on the higher terrace to the north, but I'd love to come back sometime and check out the terrace to the south and see if that gives me clues to the source, the primary source of this geochemical group. I'm going to continue on down towards the Black Rock here. Got several more stops on the way and uh, I'm trying to beat the snow. It's perfectly nice out right now though. All right, cool. Let's go. break, decided I'd go for a little walk across the gully onto the higher terraces and sure enough we have um, in situ um, obsidian nodules in this older fan on the south side of uh, Poker Brown Wash, very near Poker Brown Gap. So it looks like it's coming out of the southern, which that's the Trinity Range, um, maybe part of the or maybe at the foothills of the seven troughs a little bit. It's kind of an unorganized little group of hills and things between the two mountain ranges. But this is where, this is the source of the gravels and nodules in Poker Brown Wash that we get. Once this stuff erodes through, the washes cut it out and drag it basinward. And, uh, and you can start to pick it up and uh, people can make tools out of it, get sharp edges. Um, we'll geochem this. See if it's seven troughs, see if it's majuba, see if we can differentiate them. They have different geochemical signatures, so we should be able to, and uh, or we, we know we can, but uh, we don't exactly know where the parent, the primary source areas are. So this is really cool. I'm on the south side of Poker Wash, Poker Brown Wash, and uh, good obsidian outcrop. Nodule form, but still um, kind of the primary source area, uh, or one of them. We'll keep looking. Well, here we are, getting closer to the Black Rock, almost down to Rabbit Hole, kind of at that southeastern corner of the Black Rock Playa, where Rabbit Hole and Granite Springs Wash and things go into the uh, into the basin over there. Now, I haven't seen any gravels, I haven't seen the obsidian gravels in a long time, and I've checked a few washes since I left uh, the Poker Brown Gap area. But I know they occur down here in the fans that go into the Black Rock. And so I thought I'd catch them in Rabbit uh, Hole Wash here because that's the connection point. It's the modern connection point. And I don't see them here. Um, there's a lot of things going on here. A lot of stuff is being buried by outwash from like tributary canyons and things. It gets complicated. Um, another thing is some of these obsidian gravels, cobbles, could have been distributed around prior to the mountain uplift that we see today. And so uh, this landscape, this topography may have been much different in the past 
and uh, prior to the upbuilding and everything like that, uplifting, and uh, and so you can get those uh, late Cenozoic, Middle Cenozoic um, obsidians uh, really spread around landscape that doesn't really conform to the modern hydrographic system. Um, but that's what I want to find out. That's what I'm testing here today, and uh, on this little recce out here. Um, anyway, starting to snow. Got a few little snow squalls come in and out, so I'm trying to get make sure I get off the uh, dustier roads and uh, down onto the high road here by Sulphur and head over toward Gerlach. So cool. You know, run down a little farther here and uh, kind of wrap this little uh, tour up. It's been productive. It's kind of interesting. Get a little snowed out on the Black Rock. I'm on the high road heading towards Gerlach and home. And I uh, can't much look for obsidian anymore. Everything's snow covered. Uh, it's not bad, it's just squally. Should be fine. And uh, end of a good day. Nice way to end a day, actually. Kind of interesting drive on out of here. All right, y'all keep going. Take care. See you next time. All right, now I'm up pretty high, almost at poker, where am I at? <laughs>